Hey everyone, my name is Richard and on this channel I try to give you tips, tricks, advice, and how-tos on travel and outdoor content, and today we're going to talk about how to layer properly for cold weather. I know a lot of people are trying to get outside and stay outside even though the temps are starting to drop, but there are good and bad ways of dressing for the occasion. I'm sure most of you have heard of layering before, but you might not know why it's pushed so hard by the outdoor industry. Essentially, it all comes down to versatility. Think of it this way. If you went outside for a long walk or a nice hike in cold weather, and all you were wearing was a long sleeve t-shirt and your heavy winter coat, that'll probably keep you warm, but what happens when you start to heat up? Of course, you can probably unzip your coat and let some heat out that way, but it's all gonna be concentrated on your torso. So then you could take the entire coat off, but if a strong wind comes along or you take a moment to pause, you're gonna feel that cold immediately. Now, this is an oversimplification, but by layering, you can undress and redress as needed, creating the best environment for your given circumstances. That way, whether you're hiking or trail running or skiing or strolling or just sitting on a bench, you'll always have the perfect amount on. So, now that you know the why, here's the how. And the first thing to remember is work from your lightest layers to your heaviest. So for the torso, that might look something like this. Begin with a base layer. Mine is merino wool, but you can also use a synthetic blend. Just remember to stay away from cotton. Next is a midweight sweater or a fleece, then a lightweight synthetic jacket or maybe a vest, and then finally your heaviest insulated layer, i.e. your winter coat, puffy jacket, or parka. Second thing is always end with a shell jacket. This can be a soft shell or a windbreaker or a rain jacket, but you'll want something that's windproof and preferably waterproof that will cut the sharp cold wind and any freezing rain or snow. Shell layers also do a great job of retaining heat. So whether you're wearing it over a down puffy jacket or over a fleece jacket, it's going to help boost that item's insulation by cutting the wind and help keeping in your own body heat. Now, if you have a winter jacket that already has a shell on it, much like most winter parkas and ski jackets, then you don't have to add another shell on top of that. But if you're like me and your main insulating layer is a down puffy jacket, then adding a shell on top of that will give you the ultimate winter protection. Tip number three is don't forget your extremities. Most people will concentrate on the torso when they're layering, but you have to remember your legs, hands, and feet. For my legs, I'll start with a base layer, probably something in merino wool. Then I'll go with a pair of athletic pants or some kind of hiking pants. And then if I need to, waterproof pants or snow pants. If you're going for snow pants, you can probably get away with just a base layer underneath. Just wear what's ever going to keep you warm, but not impede your mobility. For my feet, I'll start with a thin ankle length or no-show sock to use as a liner, then I'll go for my heavyweight merino hiking socks. If it's super cold out or there's a lot of snow on the ground, I'll go for my insulated snow boots, but if it's not that bad out, my waterproof hiking boots will do just fine. And for my hands, I'll start with a thin liner glove. Yes, this too is merino wool. Then I'll go for my heavy ski gloves or mitts. And the fourth tip is to stack and overlap everything. So when you're pulling your base layer bottoms on, tuck your shirt into them and so on and so forth as you go along. Also, tuck your base layer bottoms into your socks and pull the sleeves over the cuffs of your gloves. The idea is there should be no gaps where cold air can seep in. The fifth and final tip is to cover your neck. Even if your jacket or your fleece zips all the way up to your chin, cold air will always find a way of getting in. So by covering your neck with a buff or neck gaiter or a scarf, you'll have no issues. Well, I hope these tips have helped give you an idea of how to layer properly for the cold. If you have any questions about the items that I mentioned, please leave them in the comments below. And if you aren't sure why I keep mentioning merino wool and fleece as winter insulators, then I'll link some of my videos that'll help answer those questions. 
I want to thank you again for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, and if you find this content useful, please consider subscribing. And as always, I want to wish you all the best on your next adventure.